by, by our, our new service we got going on here. Thanks to Sister Hazel. We have a free mass texting account now. And this will be like an alert system for the church. If you sign up, everybody will be will get a text saying what there's no service on this day or a reminder of we're having this event. So if you would like to sign up for that to be able to get announcements and messages from the church, if you would either give me your number or I can give you a number that you will text to and they'll sign you up. So you will see me after church. And this is not, this is a one-way texting thing. The message will go out, but you cannot respond back to it. It's just an announcement.
Think about it. You got to throw with one hand. If all you're doing is catching, it's going to be a sad life. Amen. You got you got to throw it out there. Amen. Get your Bibles. Turn to Proverbs chapter three. God is so good to us all the time. Even through all this bad weather that we've had, we could have been a whole lot worse. There were some deaths. There were some fatalities through all of this, and there was some some bad stuff happening to people around here. But overall, compared to what could have happened, we had a, we, we, we had, the Lord was blessed. Amen. Proverbs chapter three, and I'm gonna give some of what we stopped where we were at last week, and then I'm gonna uh, uh, go right on in and and jump on in. I'm gonna tell you what they were. How many did make any res resolutions this year? Just in case you didn't, it's not too late. I'm going to give you some if you don't know what you want to do. I'm going to give you some. Matter of fact, how, how, how many? But are you sick of making resolutions every year that you never keep? Are you sick of saying what you're going to do and then it doesn't happen? We're going to talk about some things that you can do, but I'm going to give you some kind of humorous ones to start with. I've decided to, with some things I can use as a starting point, I'm pretty sure I can keep these resolutions. Number one, first <coughs> resolution of the year, <coughs> gain weight. At least 30 pounds. A uh, bodybuilder. Okay, that's right. Uh, you know, matter of fact, I, I was at the, I was at, I was at the, <clears throat> I was at, I was stepping on the scale, and I, I, was, I was holding my belly and looking down at the scale, <clears throat> and and one lady said, "Come on, I said that's not going to help." Why well, says yeah, it does help you see the scale? <laughs> uh, stop exercising. It's a waste of time. Thank you, resolution. How about this? Read less. It makes you think. <laughs> Procrastinate more starting tomorrow. <clears throat> Get into a whole new rut. Uh, speak in a monotone voice and only use monosyllabic words. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> Create loose ends. Get further in debt. Don't believe politicians. Break at least one traffic law. How many want to do all these things? Not me. They're funny, but you know, but not even funny, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, we need to make resolutions that are going to make a difference in our lives. Amen? And so, so here we go. Uh, Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 3. Stand for the reading of the word. God is so good to us. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not thy law, <clears throat> but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around thy neck, write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and of man. Trust the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy, own, in, in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. And it shall be held to thy navel, and to thy bones, marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with all thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall be burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. <clears throat> Even as a father of the son, in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're ministering to us right now. Lord, this day is your day, not ours. It's your day. And, Father, help us, God, to remember that in all that we do. Help us to understand, Lord, and hold on tight to you, God, especially this last year. In the name of Jesus, I believe this is going to be our best year. Touch, Lord, everybody here. Let them understand what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. Take, some, uh, take somebody's hand on the way down and say, this is a good opportunity. Amen. Amen. Now, this is just a couple of slides from last week for those who may not have been here so you can kind of keep up <clears throat> where we're going. If you want a good summary of life, go to... <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3. So last year this time, some of you were saying this year things are going to be different. I'm going to change. How many said that last, uh, this January, last January? Amen? I'm 
I'm going to be a spouse. I'm going to spend more time with my family. I'm going to spend more time reading my Bible. Spend more time praying. Spend more time serving others. This year I'm going to get my ducks in a row. I've heard people say that. I've said that. Amen. But just a simple show of hands. How many stuck with me? Well, come on now. <coughs> Amen. So now watch <laughs> so, so this. Is. People make resolutions, and we've been talking, this is just slides from last week, I promise we're going to, or a week before last, we weren't here last week. New Year's resolutions basically fall into three categories. Uh, things that make us look better and live longer, things that make us have more, and help us to get along with everybody else. It means actually longevity, prosperity, and peace. In order to affect our lives, let's move from resolutions, which are thoughts. We, we got a thought, I, I have a bunch of good thoughts, amen? I think about exercising really hard every day. I think about uh, ways to, to just improve everything I can touch my hands every day. I think of ways, all kinds of ways that the church could be so much better, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? As long as they're in your mind, they're just thoughts. And thoughts until they come out of your mind, until they actually become action, they're just thoughts. So, Resolutions don't last. I've yet to see a New Year's resolution last. But revolutions do because a revolution is actually attitude-based. Amen? And so speaking of attitudes, now we're going to do revolu res revolutions. And so here's, here's some uh, uh, from last week. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to read this scripture again. And please pray for these. these. I, I, I think, like I said, I think it might be a reaction from the Tamil flu. I don't know. But all of a sudden my knees are swollen up. And, and I can't get them to go back down. So I know it's got something to do with that flu. it got something to do with this stuff. I know God's got this. Amen. Always. <clears throat> my son, forget my, my law. Let not thy heart keep my commandments. Let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy or truth forsake thee. Bind them round thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not into thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be held to thy navel, and merit thy bones. Honor the Lord, thy, oh, honor the Lord with thy sustenance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with, a new wine, with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. <clears throat> That's the first 12 verses. And here's, here's our revolutions from last week. And then we're going on. <clears throat> Revolution number one, or attitude number one, is simply, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Revolution number two, or attitude number two, trust the Lord with all your heart. Attitude number three, do not be wise in your own eyes. Attitude number four, honor the Lord with your wealth. And attitude number five, despise not the Lord's discipline. Remember, when we see chastising, we always think of it as a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. How many here go to training at your work? You have training classes. That's discipline. That is old English chastising. How many here like to study at night? Or study when you get a chance? You're studying your Bible. You know what? You're chastening yourself. Amen? So chastening is not a bad thing. Every time we see chastening, we think of a whip. Or we think of taking it to the woodshed. No. Chastening is discipline. Discipline can be rough. But discipline is just getting yourself in the condition to learn and to change your ways. Okay? So now, revolution number six. Now, we've got the first, first five right there. Now, revelation number six, which is so cool. We all need this. I love this. What exactly is the New Year's resolution? It's a to-do list for the first week of January. <laughs> Amen. Here we go. Revolution number six, or attitude number six, search diligently for wisdom and find it. Don't just look for it, find it. But this is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies, nothing you desire can compare to her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant, ways, all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. 
<coughs> and by his knowledge, <coughs> his deeps were divided, and the clouds that drop the dew. My son preserved sound judgment and discernment, that the clouds let drop the dew. My son preserved sound judgment and discernment, <coughs> don't let them out of your sight. There will be a life for you and an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. You will lie down. You will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. There is no stopping us. We have to find wisdom. I remember working at Procter Gamble, and this is kind of a, a, a crazy way. Let me just go ahead and go to this next slide and I'll explain what I'm talking about. So search diligently for wisdom, right? Well, there, 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 there's two kinds of wisdom. Did you know that? I'm not talking just earthly wisdom and spiritual wisdom. I'm talking about there's, there's actually two categories or two groups or characteristics of wisdom. The first characteristic, of course, is information. It says, verse 13 through 20, uh, it talks about uh, uh, wisdom to deal with knowledge, learning, information, intelligence, data, facts, uh, intellect, and experience. And then there's know-how. talks about those characteristics of wisdom which deal with perception, discernment, judgment, reason, insight, prudence, discretion, and just plain old common sense. So now, I remember Hunter Gamble, uh, I asked, I told him, I said, I'm really in a bind here. I need some people here to help me with these, uh, this computerized, these PLCs, this, this machine, this uh, PLC operated, and, and uh I need some technicians. I don't need uh, operators. Y'all are sending operators. I don't need operators. I need somebody that can get down there with a meter and take care of it. Somebody can get there and take a, <clears throat> a meter, scope, whatever, and can fix things. <coughs> and so this one guy actually went and told uh, his, uh, he, he said, I got somebody sent to you. He says, it's my nephew. When the department manager has a nephew, He sends his nephew who just graduated from electronics school. I said, well, okay, so it's his nephew, so that means I'm going to be careful how I say it. He's my boss. And uh, is he, uh, he's from just from electronics school, but I found out once he went to work there, I trained him for the first three or four months, and I found out he couldn't walk and chew chewing gum. At the same time, honest to God, he could not take a meter and find a bad fuse. He had a two-year degree. He could not find a bad fuse. He could not, he could not terminate a motor. He could not do anything we needed done. He had no idea what a PLC was. And so I actually said to my immediate boss, why don't you just send me another operator? Instead of sending me him. He said, well, that's the boss's son or nephew. He needs a job, and he went to his uncle, his uncle, and his uncle said, I got one for you. David needs help. We're going to send you to him. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Again, information. He had a two-year degree, information, but he did not have any know-how. He could not even check a fuse. I kid you not, he could not take a meter and check a fuse. I almost, I almost died when I saw what they sent me and how I had to train him to go and use meters and use all this other stuff, mega, mega, uh, megas and all this. I had to, it just, just blew me away. But again, a lot of times we have information. We hear it every Sunday. Every Sunday you hear information. But if all, all it is, if you don't apply it to your life, if you have a bad attitude, if you won't grow up in the Lord, all it's going to be is just information. And so when you need it, guess what? You're not going to be able to use it. It's amazing how much information we have been given over the years. How to live for God. How to do for God. How to handle things. How to handle ourselves. How to handle other things. How to handle people. How to handle certain situations. But then, because it's only information, it doesn't help us when we get in the trenches. So God says it's important that we ask for wisdom. I don't want just information. I got all kinds of information. You know, as I'm going to school now, and I sit back, and, and Linda, Linda's going to school too, and, and she's taking a class that I took last year. And while she's taking that class, she said, well, why don't you think about this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just rattling right off to her. And she goes, this is, and I, I let her watch, I 
watched her watch some of her classmates who had never been in a leadership class. And they were just astounded by some of us out there watching. And it's stuff I've been learning now for about 15, 20 years. And so to me, it was old school. With them, it was new school. But you know, it's old school or new school if we don't use it. If you don't use it, it's worthless. So, ask God. This year is a resolution. God, <clears throat> I don't want just to have knowledge. I don't want to sit down to another sermon and get knowledge and walk off and never use it. I want to be able to take that knowledge and the Holy Spirit. I ingest it in the Holy Spirit. When I ingest it and I pray about it, I see God. God will take that knowledge and He will combine it with, with His power. And now you got wisdom. And with that wisdom, you can actually see life change. How many want to see life change? You hear it every week, how to change life. But you know what? If it's not changing, if you're still fighting the same battles this year that you were fighting five years ago, the problem is you've got know-how or you've got information, but you don't have that know-how. That God give you that wisdom. That right there was worth it all. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Number seven, Anna, two. I'm going to keep you long. Number seven, eight, but there's about ten of them, so you, won't, you, ain't got, you don't have long. <clears throat> Revelation number seven, have no fear. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that ever takes the wicked, for the war will be your confidence and will keep you, your foot, from being snared. I remember when it snowed last week. It snowed in my front yard week before last. It literally, the smallest, the, 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 the lowest snow. In my yard that I can measure, the lowest snow was eight inches. It, 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 most of the places was with the drifts and all that stuff too, but it, most of the places is around 12 inches. And the street that I lived on, I'm glad that I didn't have to drive to my final every day. I just walked down there. And normally it's seven, seven houses down from him, and it normally takes, takes just a couple of minutes for me to walk down there briskly. And this time and I was taking 10 to 15 minutes to get to it because I literally had to make a path to get to him and my mother-in-law. But, again, I didn't fear that. I saw the stuff and I just said, thank you for your creation, God. I know you got it covered. And then finally, uh, some stuff started going down and so uh, we needed some stuff. They needed some stuff. And so, we weren't expecting to be put up that long. And so I got, my, I got in Linda's SUV versus my car. And, and so I started driving through and I brought Beth with one time. Beth said, Daddy, this is scary. Because there's places there, I'm talking about in Washington, I could not believe up to the hospital, they had not even cleaned off the roads for the rescue squads to go in. This is three or four days later. There was places that still had ice right where the rescue squads had to go into the hospital or emergency room. I couldn't believe it. I, I, can't, I don't remember this much snow and this much ice. And after all these heavy, heavy temperatures yesterday, there was still a big old pile of snow uh, that you could set in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pews around. They had a few. There was a big old pile of snow out in the mall. They had, they had just piled up and it was about six or seven foot deep with all those temperatures. That's how much snow we had. Y'all remember? Y'all were there? Amen. And so, so, so I was sitting there and I was driving and Bethany said, Daddy, I don't like this. I said, Bethany, I'm not afraid of it. And she said, why? I said, well, well personally it's because I, I know how to drive it. I'm, I, this is my first radio. You don't know how to drive it, but I do. I said, but if that's all I had to go by, I would really be afraid. I said, but I've got God with me, and I'm not doing my hair joy ride. I'm out here getting some medicine. I said, it's going to be okay. And so I got God, and, and I just saw my breath and said, God, you got this, God, you got this. And then you had those, then you had these guys, these great little big four-wheel drive trucks that had to show everybody how big and bad they were with those big four-wheel drive trucks. And I got passed on a road with no, nothing but the ice. There was no, you could not see the cement or the asphalt. And the big four drive kept coming behind me and trying to run me out like he could run, like run me off the road. And I looked over at Beth and I said, I ain't moving. Why don't I want to speed up one of them in a dish so he can pull me out? He can feel good that he pulled me out of the dish he ran me into. And that rascal passed me. And after he passed me, a little ways down the road, he went to turn and when he turned, I saw him doing like this. And so I reckon he's all right. I don't know. I didn't go down and check on him. I was too busy trying to stay on the road. Amen. But, I mean, if he'd have been in trouble, we'd have heard something. He's kept on going after he spun around. 
again, have no fear. There's a lot of things happening right now. And it's, it's really kind of crazy, North Korea, South Korea. Now North Korea has finally opened up a line of communication with South Korea. Have you heard about that? They finally opened up, they finally opened up uh, communication, which to me says something's up. Russia is being kind of quiet in some ways right now. But they've been, they've been zooming our stuff and getting as much as they can to it, trying to almost like they're trying to provoke something. And you hear Iran's been kind of quiet, so, uh, but they got that nuclear deal going on, a lot of stuff. And so there's a lot of things happening there a lot. But you know what? I, and it brings a lot of fear on people. And fear, you can tell somebody that's chronically afraid. You know what? Some, somebody's chronically afraid. It's one thing to have a past fear, just, oh, you know what? I don't like that. But when you have a chronic fear, all of a sudden, you begin to get depressed or you get anxiety. Usually, depression is about what you're in right now, bring it up from the past and what you're in right now. Anxiety is looking at the future. So, you look at anxiety kind of like a depression for the future and depression for right now and for behind you. But, but again, you got all this stuff going on. But our fear fades away because we have confidence in God. I don't have to worry about this thing. I know God's got us. Amen? Every day of my life, I say, God's got this. God's got it. But Beth and I were riding down the road. Beth said, what are we going to do? Look, at Look how bad it looks out here, Dad. And I said, don't worry. God's got this. God's got this. Amen. So, that's another, another resolution or revolution for this year in attitude. I refuse to be afraid. I'm not going to live in depression. I'm not going to live in anxiety. Remember, depression is what's going on now and in the past. Anxiety is now and in the future. And I'm not going to worry about the future or the past. The past is behind me. Uh, the future is ahead of me, but God is with me, and so nothing shall be impossible. Amen? <clears throat> number eight. Here we go. Revolution number eight. Get ready. Here's a good one. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. When I say deserve it, now, now I'll watch. I'm trying to be smart about this now because... On every corner in Greenwood, there's somebody holding up a sign. Want money? You see them? Now they're at the stop. They're at stoplights now, and they're holding up a sign: "Homeless, need food, God bless." And they're talking on the cell phone, smoking cigarettes, and run back over to get something fancy to eat and come back over and again sell phone cigarettes and they're homeless. You know what? If I'm homeless, I'm not going to be smoking cigarettes. If I'm homeless, I might buy have a phone. I'll buy the cheapest phone I can get. I'm not going to have an iPhone with all the stuff on it. You know, I had a guy, I had a guy literally, he was delivering something for me from a, from a business. And then I said, I'll help you. Because the man said, I will deliver it today, but we don't have anybody to help the delivery guy. I said, I'll help you. And so I went to help the delivery guy. We're riding down the road and he says, uh, he said, I don't make enough on this job. I said, you don't? He said, no. He said, uh, here's what I make. And he, I couldn't believe it. He said, here's what I make. And he says, and how am I supposed to pay $150 a month to direct TV? And how am I supposed to pay $200 a month for me and my girlfriend to have a cell phone? And I finally couldn't take it anymore. I first thought he was joking. I said, there's a camera on it. And I said, it's not a camera. And so I looked at the granddad and I said, well, you know what? He said, well, I said, suddenly, oh, and he said, I got this $100 a month for my internet. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I just saw an advertisement suddenly. You can get, you can get cable and you can get your internet and everything for $60 a month. Everything you need right there for $60 a month. Wi-Fi, everything. He said, really? I said, yeah. He said, wow. That would make life a whole lot simpler than $150 a month. It was 100 and 100 I said, yeah. Again. I gave him some, I gave, look, so I gave, him, I gave him a tip. And so I gave him a tip, and I gave him a tip as I'm riding the bike. He's taking me to my house or to my car. He's taking me to my car, and I gave him a tip. He said, then he said, well, this is enough for me to get something. And for I mean, this is enough for my girlfriend to get supper, for my baby to get supper, but this ain't enough for me to get supper. So I pulled out some more money and I said, Well, here, this is enough. And went on. So I was 
say is though, see, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. Do good unto those that's going to just go crazy. I'm talking about do not withhold good from those who deserve it. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later and I'll give it tomorrow when you have it now. It's a whole different ball game. You go along and you see somebody in trouble and you can help them, help them. You know, if, if you know somebody, the Bible says in James, if somebody says they're cold, don't say, I'll pray for you. Go be warm. I'll pray for you. If you've got two coats, you give them a coat. You want God to bless you? Really bless you? You start being a blessing. I guarantee you, whatever you need in your own life, if you'll be a blessing to somebody else in that area, God will bless you. So, so again, do good to others whenever you have the opportunity. Always remember this. Seize the moment. Give to others when they need it. Do not withhold good. Give it and give it liberally and give it immediately. I have decided in my life that life's too short for me to try to gather up a whole bunch of stuff here for me. Instead, because you know, uh, my uncle spent 30 years in the, in the Coast Guard. 30 years. Can you imagine this check? And he was pretty, he was one of the he was very, very high. I don't know if y'all are you enlisted. In the, in the Coast Guard or not, but he wasn't an officer. He was uh, what kind of sergeant it was, or any officer. But he had 30 years in the in the in the uh, Coast Guard, and then he spent a couple of years working here at a mechanic shop and got his work actually with with the, with the county and retired. He turned 60, I think it was like, he was either 62 or 65. And so he decided what he was I'm just going to retire because I've got the Coast Guard and I've got this other retirement. I'm ready to go. I'm going to retire. And before he got his first check, in the middle of the night, his wife, they called me the next morning, but in the middle of the night, he hollered her name, grabbed his leg, had a massive heart attack. He never got a chance. For all that he had coming, he never got a chance. And and you see people like that too. Since in the last year or two, I have I've buried four or five classmates. And so I have decided that instead of me trying to, to look out all for number one, my decision is to try to do my best to look out for everybody around me. Especially when I see a need, feel it. See the need. And you know what? God will take care of it. So, I try to be need conscious of other people. Alright. Revelation. Or revolution. Number nine. Revelation three. And this is good stuff. Uh -oh. <laughs> now, Mr. Fountain had his own golden rule. Mr. Fountain used to have that great big chain around his neck. But the, the fountain symbol. And he sat down and said, I'm, I'm, I'm invoking the golden rule. All the engineers sit at the table. We all come up with these answers for all those problems. Have good answers. He comes and says, I'm invoking the golden rule. And so I remember the first time I said, what do you mean doing to others? He's doing this and that. He with the gold makes the rules. <laughs> well, this isn't the same golden rule. Watch this. Attitude number nine. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason. When he has done you no harm. You see, plotting against others should never be the activity of God's people. It is never justified. Never. Even if somebody's done you wrong, it is never justified for you to get him. Let me get him. You know, I, I, I've seen some guys over the years that honestly, I, I know what they were doing. I know what they were saying. I even heard them. They even called them in. And then when they're, they, then all of a sudden, uh, I had some guys one time that were talking about D.C. and Daniel because they didn't think D.C. and Daniel were living under their expectations, although their children didn't matter, but D.C. and Daniel lived under their expectations. I said, well, they're my kids, if you don't mind. And I said, living under my expectations, and they're, and they're also serving God. So if you don't mind, I, I, me and God got this. Well, the harm they tried to cause, and then, then within months, their children went down real quick and were in bad trouble with drugs and other things. And they come to me, wanted me to help them. Now, I could have, I could have said, tough luck, buddy. You're complaining because D.C. 
happened to be in a club that would serve beer to older age people, but not to him. He had a tag on his arm. It was he has a tag on his arm. He's not being served beer. He's there with the kids younger than his age and younger. They're not even drinking. You're complaining about that. Now, I didn't. You know what? He came up, and I said, what can I do to help you? Uh, and he, put his, he just put his arm on my shoulder, and he cried like a baby. And I held him, and I cried with him. Now, the human side of me wanted to say, tough luck, buddy. But the God side of me said, let me help you every way I can. And it's been over and over and over again in my life. And, and let, me, let me just tell you about this one, one, this one situation. I was at Fountain Power Boats. And the guy that, there was one of the guys, uh, a head of an apartment, he, he, uh, he did powder coat. <clears throat> he could not stand the vice president of engineering. But when the vice president of engineering quit, he assigned me his job. Not vice president, but I'm talking about the ISO 9000. So I was in charge of ISO 9000, and so this guy used to call me the, the, the vice president's name, which was Jim. He said, well, come on, Jim. Jim, good yeah, Jim. And he would talk about me and cuss, uh, cuss me in front of people. And one of the guys came to me and said, does he not know that you have the power to fire him? I said, obviously he don't. And he said, you going to let me keep talking about you like that? I said, yes, I am. He said, why are you going to do this? I said, because I've got a bigger power that's going to handle it. And so for months, he cussed me and talked junk to me. And finally, one day, uh, we had a report of two or three boats that the powder coat was substandard. It was so substandard that we would have never have done this. And Mr. Fountain said, when I find out who did this, I'm going to fire him. And according to the paperwork, it was him. And he looked at me and he said, he said, watch this. Mr. David. <laughs> Up until this point, he was cussing me. And calling me Jim, I said, Mr. David. I said, I'm not Mr. I'm just David. He said, they're going to fire me. I said, no, they're not. He said, yeah, they are. They got this stuff on me. I said, well, he said, but I'll tell you, I didn't do it. I said, well, how about just let me look? And so I took all the databases down and I searched for a couple of weeks and I finally found the paperwork that showed that he had taken over the department, but it's still the last three months were done by the guy that had quit. He didn't care. And so he had taken these million dollar books and messed them up. And so I looked at him and said, buddy, you're going to be okay. He said, no, 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 Mr. Brown, I'm going to fire him. Mr. Brown, I'm going to fire him. I need his job. I need his job. Blah, blah, blah. I said, Hold on. Now again, for six months or more, he's been cussing me and talking junk about me. So, so he comes up, and I go to Mr. Fountain. I said, Mr. Fountain, Willie didn't do this. Willie had nothing to do with this. He goes, well, I said, no, he had nothing to do with it. And he said, show me. And I showed him. I said, the guy that quit, he did it. And I showed him all the paperwork. And he said, good job, David, good job. And I said, I didn't want to get a good job, man. I just want to keep this guy's job. That guy come to me. When he found out he, had, he kept his job, he came with tears in his eyes and he hugged my neck and he said, I'll never forget this as long as I live. From that day forward, he was like a bodyguard for me. I left Fountain and five years later, I was gone from Fountain. A guy moved next door to my father-in-law. And well, he says, he says, yeah, I just retired from Fountain. And my father says, really? He says, my son-in-law used to work there. He said, who was he? he said David Linton and he said the man fell to his knees and started crying he said are you okay he says you don't understand what that man means to me he's wiping the tears from his eyes he said I was so mean to that man I was so so mean to that man and he said when he had the opportunity to lower the bloom on me he looked out for me he let me keep my job he says, you know what, if that man ever needs anything, anytime, day or night, all he does call me, and I'll be right there for him. Because when he had the opportunity to give me back what I gave him, he showed me God. <coughs> Some powerful stuff. I'm here to tell you, watch this. The golden rule should always be our compass. It should always be our guide. Matter of fact, here's something. Resolve this year to treat everyone with the love of Christ 
and to treat them as you want to be treated. Here's the final one. Come on. You can do it. There we go. <coughs> do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a, a, a perverse man, but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. This is so simple. I'm going to stop. I'm going to end with this. DC, come on up here and start playing something, but I'm going to end with this. Keep it simple. That phrase was overplayed a few years ago. But you can't ever play it when it comes to your life. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? If Jesus, he took